Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here uh, to Singularity University Summit Greece. Um, uh, as mentioned, I'm from XPRIZE. Uh, for those of you who just happen to not know what we do, we're a nonprofit organization based in Los Angeles and we run large international competitions for technology development to address some of the grand challenges on this planet, but also address some of the opportunities, the grand opportunities that we face. I want to start with this quote, the problems of the world cannot possibly be solved by skeptics or cynics whose horizons are limited by the obvious realities. We need people to dream, who can dream of things that never were. And this quote embodies everything that we do at XPRIZE, all the way from Peter who started this, to the innovators and the entrepreneurs who take part and form teams to compete and to tackle the challenges that we set forth at XPRIZE. So Peter, of course, was a space geek, just in case anyone didn't know, and started with the Ansari X Prize, which was for... Oh. Okay, so, um, so the, this uh, competition was for suborbital space flight. Uh, this was awarded in 2004, and since then, we've, of course, branched out from space, and we now do a lot of work in different arenas, medicine, education, and planet and environment. So that's the domain that I oversee at XPRIZE. The planet and environment domain work started in 2010 with the Gulf of Mexico oil spill, Deepwater Horizon. The technology that was used to clean up that oil spill was the same that was used for Exxon Valdez decades earlier. There'd been no R&D. So Wendy Schmidt, private philanthropy, uh, put forward funding to challenge people to develop technology that could clean up oil faster. And in 15 months, 15 short months, we now have technology that can clean up oil four times faster than before. So that's the power of a prize and a competition. The next one in the Planet and Environment series uh, was the Wendy Schmidt Ocean Health X Prize. This is where I joined. I was technical director for this competition. So this competition was to develop pH sensors. We know that the climate is changing. We know it's impacting the ocean. What we didn't have in 2013 when this was launched were sensors that could detect that change accurately. The way that scientists knew that things were changing is they would go out in a boat, they'd bring back water back to the lab and analyze it. In 2015, when we awarded this, we now have lab quality sensors that we can leave in the ocean for a year or more at a time to detect those changes. By the way, this was a $2 million competition, $1 million for very accurate sensors, $1 million for accurate but affordable sensors. And the same team entered uh, in both prizes, and they won both purses. So they walked away with $1.5 million and they are from Montana, which is not known these days anyway for its ocean environment. And this shows that a good idea can come from anywhere. You don't have to live by the ocean in order to solve a problem that's connected to the ocean. So this brings me to the third one, the Shell Ocean Discovery X Prize. This is the one I'm executive director for this competition. Uh, this is to map the ocean floor at a very high resolution. 71% of our planet is covered by ocean, and right now we have mapped at high resolution somewhere around 6 to 8%. This means that most of our planet is an unknown entity to us. It's like living in a three-floor house, and we only know what's on the first floor. So there is a lot down there. There's history. So we say that the deep ocean is the world's largest museum. We haven't yet had a chance to discover it. Uh, there's mystery. Again, we don't know what's out there. And then there's wonder. There are creatures out there that we have not yet seen. What we have seen are creatures that can conduct electricity, that can camouflage themselves. Um, there are uh, drugs that are down there. There's a lot of stuff down there. There are the bathymetry, which is the, um, the landforms, there are cliffs that are 3,000 meters high. Imagine finding a, that on land. The longest unbroken mountain chain in the solar system is on our planet, and it's underwater. 
So this competition is really to address and find out what is down there and to map the, the ocean floor for the first time in our history. We're challenging teams. It's a $7 million competition, by the way, in which we're challenging teams to map the floor at five meter or higher resolution in 24 hours, and they have to map at least 250 square kilometers in that time. And this is truly audacious. Using technology of today to map that kind of area at that resolution would take days. We're asking them to do it in 24 hours. Um, in addition to the main prize of mapping and also bringing back images, by the way, because we are on a, a voyage of discovery, we're asking, uh, there's a bonus prize from a US federal government entity, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, to develop a pioneering technology, an underwater smart sniffer. Technology that can detect a biological or chemical signal underwater and autonomously track it to the source. One of the big pieces for this competition is, in addition to accelerating technology for the ocean environment, um, we're also trying to catalyze new markets. Uh, when we were looking at the prize design for this, one of the failures we found as to why the ocean floor had not yet been mapped, other than the te technical issues, is that it's hugely expensive. You need to take a ship out to sea. A ship can cost over $100,000 a day. If you have to sail for 10 days before you start mapping, you've already lost a million dollars just sailing out there before you actually start the mapping work. So we have removed the need for ships at sea. So these are all unmanned or autonomous platforms that you launch from the shore. A future example use of this technology, in addition to mapping, is if a plane goes down or a ship goes down, in addition to uh, the NOAA bonus prize piece, we will have technology that you can launch from shore and these smart underwater robots will sniff out the chemical signal of that plane. So we would no longer have to do search and rescue in the manner that we do it today. So where are we with this competition? We launched it in December of 2015, so it's been almost three years now since launch. Uh, we are approaching the end of the competition. We are now in the final testing of these prototype sensors and these prototype robots. Um, and we are doing this, as has been mentioned, in Kalamata, Greece. It's a wonderful place to do this. I often get asked, why did you choose Kalamata? Uh, because we have a series of criteria we're looking for. We need a place in the world with 4,000 meter depth, which exists just off the coast there. We need a place that can support us and our teams, restaurants, hotels, uh, facilities, which Kalamata has. So we need a number of things that have to come together to operationalize a competition like this. So we're very excited. I'm gonna run through some of the details of what's happening in Kalamata right now. Um, and I want you to realize this is a moment in history. These, these devices are breaking records right now. We saw one last week, we'll see one this week, we'll see one next week. This is gonna change our, our knowledge of our entire planet forever. So let's talk about some of the partners. We have some great partners. Singularity University Greece Summit, of course. Thank you very much, Nikki, wherever you are. Um, she introduced us to NCSR Democritus, um, and we're working with them. Uh, they have an interest in this competition, uh, in the nuclear department, which may not seem like an obvious match at first. I was a bit surprised when I first came across it, but they are in an international program to build a deep sea neutrino detector. So neutrinos are high energy particles from space, and they need the map that we will produce in order to assess the base site for this neutrino detector uh, array. So this project doesn't end with just the technology. It has continuing impact and continuing uh, repercussions that really benefit society as a whole. Um, and then, of course, the city of Kalamata. So the mayor and the port fund of Kalamata. We've worked with the Coast Guard there, the Customs Office. Uh, so we have a lot of support. Uh, we've, we've come to know the restaurant owners by name by now. Um, so let's talk about some of the teams. We have teams from 25 countries, team members, truly, truly an international competition. They are all coming here to Greece. Uh, in the next, they've started three weeks ago and will continue till the end of December. 
There are over 550 individuals who have participated in this, many of whom were not really in this field at all before. So what these competitions do is they excite and interest people from around the world to participate to solve a grand challenge. Here's an image of Kalamata and our mission control over there. There's a rainbow. I took this photo last week. There is gold at the end of the rainbow. It's, it's the prize. Um, this is our team that came through last, uh, in the last two weeks. This is the Jebco NF alumni team. It's an international alumni network that formed a team. They are alumni from a hydrography program. Hydrography, of course, is a Greek word. Um, and the technology, one of their entries, this piece, is a surface component. This was an engineering diagram in February of 2017. So in a year and a half, this was built, tested, 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 and operationally successfully did a 34-hour unmanned mission a week and a half ago. That is incredible. Uh, if just an insight into our mission control, here's the team uh, planning their mission before they go out. Uh, and then when they come back with the data, they have 48 hours in which to process it and hand it to us. So they work through the night to do that. Uh, our next team is now actually in the field. They're doing their wet testing today. Uh, Argonauts from Germany. They have a different approach. They have a swarm of surface vessels, catamarans, four of them and also underwater vehicles that will work in tandem together. Our third team checked in with us this morning. It's a one-man team from Switzerland, again, not known for its ocean environment, uh, and he's taking yet a different approach. Most of our teams are using sound. He's using light to map the seafloor, so he's using LiDAR, uh, which is completely different from the other teams. Uh, we have a team from the UK, Team Tao. It's a UK-Chinese uh, endeavor. Their technology is 3D printed case, and they have multiple pods. They're using a different approach. Most teams are, are mapping in a lawnmower or booster feed and manner. They have these pods that go down and make maps in circles as they go up and down, and then they will weave them together in post. And then we have a team from Japan. Um, and they will be here towards the end of December. And they have three or four, two or three of these devices that will go underwater and will work in tandem to map the floor. And collectively, we want to have a high-resolution map, at least 100 meters of the entire seafloor by 2030. To give you a sense of what that means, using technology of today, it would take 200 to 600 years to map that. We're looking at pushing this to within our own lifetimes. So now I want to step back from this and quickly run through some of the other planet and environment domain areas. Uh, the Water Abundance X Prize that we just awarded this was to extract water from the atmosphere, clean drinking water, uh, so that everyone on the planet has some form of access to clean drinking water. We heard yesterday that 50% of hospitalizations are because of poor water, so we're trying to solve that. We have the NRG COSIA Carbon X Prize, which is, extracted, which is stopping carbon dioxide from growing into the atmosphere at power plants, turning it into an economically valuable product. Uh, and then some future prizes, and this is just to whet your appetite. We have a zero waste mining prize coming up. So in this room, your cell phones, the copper that's in your cell phones, destroyed 3,000 kilograms of earth. That's what this is to address. Can we resolve that and not destroy the planet, but also get the resources we need? Coral reefs. Uh, in the last few years, 50% of our, our near-surface corals that we know of have died. This is like killing the rainforest. This is the rainforest of the ocean. Can we stop an ecosystem from dying? Earthquake prediction. We have a prize designed for this. We're now looking for the funding for this one. Greece is prone to earthquakes, of course, but this is a global issue. Uh, can, we, can we get better earthquake prediction with longer lead times to save lives? Cyclone prediction, same thing. Global issue, we've got a prize design. Can we improve our prediction capabilities? We have a future of forest impact map, so I fully expect to see soon enough a wildfire detection and extinction X prize, which, of course, I, I live in California now, and, and we're having severe issues with this. Um, instead of just putting stopping carbon into the, going into the atmosphere, can we actually start to extract it? 
And then finally, the solar shield. Even if we stopped CO2 today, the Earth would continue to rise in temperature for the next 40 years. Can we put a shade on just for a few years to give us time? So I leave with this. What would be your X prize? Um, and thank you very much. <laughs>